Hello and welcome to Replicon's product webinar on how to streamline your time capture and how to track time against tasks, projects, or activities that you have in your Replicon instance. In this webinar today, we're going to talk about the different ways that you can capture time, different features that you can use on Replicon uh, timesheet. However, uh, the things that we show you in today's webinar are some things that are basically used or recommended from our site for time capture, but you can feel free to use any combinations as you can customize your timesheet templates in Replicon based on your needs. So let's start with some agenda for today's webinar. We'll first talk about the benefits of tracking time in the Replicon instance. Uh, we'll then move on to different timesheet entry methods that are available in the Replicon system. Then we'll see uh, different uh, time tracking uh, ways with some examples, so we'll get into the system and have a quick look at the demo of how different ways are done for time capturing. And if you have any questions, we can answer them on our way to the webinar, or we can answer your questions in the Q&A session uh, that follows the webinar. We will also have a quick look at uh, the places where you can look at for more information. So let's start with the benefits of time tracking. The first one is uh, in terms of capturing your payroll data. So with Replicon, if you're tracking time, the payroll data and the payroll amount can be checked and paid out in time and accurately. So all that you have to do is just capture time and uh, the rest for the payroll data and payroll amount, you can leave it over to Replicon for the calculation. The next is billing the client for the project uh, that you or your employees have been working for and it becomes a lot easier because all the projects have been input in the system. All that you have to do is just capture those projects and clients and tasks on your timesheet and uh, put in your time against it. The next one is that it helps the company keep a track of the cost that's been involved for every employee and that reduces the costs and risks in case if it happens. So um, it's easier to assign a cost for every employee in Replicon and with the time that gets captured or is input, it becomes a lot easier to capture the total cost that's been involved per employee in the Replicon system. Next, this helps you analyze the data and drive up some better decisions as an organization. So it's simpler uh, to analyze any data that has been input in terms of time capturing. And uh, lastly, it helps you maximize the efficiency, whether it's in terms of people putting in time or somebody who's tracking and keeping uh, the track of the time that's been entered. There are different ways that you can use Replicon to track time as. The first one is duration-based, then we have in and out method, and you have a punch-based method. With duration-based, we allow you to enter the total hours that you have worked against an activity, client, project, or task that uh, depends on the modules that you have purchased from Replicon. In and out allows you to enter in time and out time manually on the timesheet, and if you have the in out timesheet to in, uh, allow you to go ahead and uh, put in the in time and out time against activity, client, or project, then that's possible too. The last one is punch-based, where we allow you to punch in and out of work without being able to manually edit the punches that you've made, and those punches can be made against activities, clients, programs, projects, or tasks in the system. Right, so let's then uh, go forward and have a quick demo of different uh, ways that you can capture time in the Replicon instance. I'm going to exit out of my presentation and log in one by one into each user profile, showing you how different methods can be worked upon. The first one, um, I'm logging in as user one, which allows you to enter time in a duration-based timesheet. So I'm gonna log in as the user one right here. You will see a timesheet with a time distribution table showing up. Now you can have a combination of widgets on this particular page, but uh, the widget that allows you to go ahead and capture time as duration is the time distribution uh, widget. Under this table, uh, you just have to go ahead and click on add row and you can go ahead and choose your project, client, task in case there is any, and you can choose activities that's been assigned to you in your profile. With each selection that you make, you can go ahead and enter the total number of hours that you've worked on a particular day with regards to the selection. In case uh, you have more uh, projects and tasks to be selected for the same day, you can click on Add Row again, choose the next uh, client project and task uh, combination, and put in the rest of the hours against that combination here, right? 
Add for your timesheet, the hours that you're putting in is going to be auto-saved, so you don't have to worry about saving the work that you are performing. Every time it gets also auto-saved, you will have a message on the top right-hand corner. It says changes have been saved, so you know that whatever time you have entered on the timesheet is already captured and saved. Other than that, there are some features on this timesheet that you can make use of, features like the date range that you see on the top, which you can make use of to navigate to your previous or next timesheet. All that you have to do is just click on the date range. Using these arrows or these filters, you can go ahead and have a look at your previous timesheets or your future timesheets if needed. You can also have a quick uh, look at your next or previous timesheet using the arrows that are present next to the date range. Coming a little down, you see a gray box called not submitted. That's the status of your timesheet. There are four statuses that you may come across with regards to your time entries or timesheet. The first one called not submitted is available because the timesheet is still open with you and you can go ahead and edit it and put in any changes, whatever that you would like to. Once you click on the submit for approval button that you see right up here, um, you will have your timesheet get into status called waiting for approval if there's an approval path that's been assigned to you. The waiting for approval status uh, comes up in an orange color box and signifies that uh, the timesheet has been submitted by you but is yet to be approved by the approver. The third status that you may come across with regards to your timesheet is called the approved status. Uh, that comes up in a green color box signifying that your timesheet has been approved uh, by the approver. And the last status that shows up is called rejected. It comes up in a red color box signifying that the timesheet has been rejected uh, by the approver and there are some changes that you need to make with regards to it. Right next to the status, you see the due date. It's called due on and then a date right here. It ideally signifies the date on which you're supposed to be submitting your timesheet. This is set up by the administrator. And in case you don't submit your timesheet on the due date, it gets into an overdue state. So there's a status called overdue. And your managers or supervisors uh, have a column on to their Replicon instance, which can list out all the timesheets that are overdue. You can still submit your timesheet in the overdue state. You can still make changes to the timesheet in the overdue state. If you just want to have a quick look at what all timesheets are pending in the overdue state, you can click on the See All Timesheet icon and you will go over to a page where you can see the list of all the timesheets that have been generated for you till now. And you have a column called Overdue where you can click on and see all the timesheets that are overdue for now. To go back to the timesheet view that you were on, you can either go ahead and click on the date range or you can click on the timesheet tab and it takes you back to the timesheet view that you were on. In addition to that, you also have a link called See All Approvers. So if you have an approval path set up, this is where you will have a quick look at who is going to be approving your timesheet. If I click on See All Approvers, it's always going to show you system before the name of the approver because the system does a back-end check on your timesheet, confirming if there are no errors or validations that have been applied on your timesheet. And in case there are any errors or warnings, it immediately brings them up on the time timesheet and so you can go ahead and correct it before you submit it again. If there aren't any errors or uh, warnings, then the system approves your timesheet and forwards it to the respective approval. With regards to some buttons that you see right here, you have a print icon on the top right hand corner. You can make use of this icon to print your timesheet or save it as PDF. Based on the browser that you're using, you will see a print preview listed out here and you can print your timesheet accordingly. You have this refresh icon, we call it recalculate icon. Uh, this recalculation or refresh happens by the system automatically in few seconds, but in case you don't want to wait for the system to do a check on your timesheet and you want to do it manually, this button will help you do that. The next is the clear all button, so if you want all the timesheets data to be cleared out and you want a blank timesheet to start fresh, you can use the clear all button, but remember that every time you click on clear all, it'll give you a warning, and if you go ahead and say yes to clear all, there's no undo action for that clearing. You will have to manually go ahead and put in time once again for the time that you cleared all. The last button that you see here uh, after click clear all is the overwrite with button. So if I click in here, there are different ways that you can copy the timesheet data from the previous to the current timesheet. Let's leave the first option that says allocate timesheet R. We'll talk about it in a bit when we move on to the other timesheet methods. But let's look at the ones that are 
present after allocate timesheet as options like previous timesheet excluding or including the time data. So if you want the previous timesheet to be copied completely, including or excluding the time data, then you can make use of either of these options. The last one is the scheduled hours, where if you want to populate your scheduled hours on the timesheet, then you can make use of the scheduled hour option. There are different widgets that your administrator can configure and uh, that will be present in here. Widgets like time off uh, history, widgets like approval history, widgets like uh, any comments. Uh, so whatever widgets been enabled or customized by your administrator, they will all be mentioned on this page. But the time distribution widget is the one that allows you to enter time as time duration based. This is the first way of entering time. Let's log in as the second user and look at the second way of entering time. So I'm going to log into user number two. All right, the second user is going to be using uh, the method of manually putting in the in time and the out time for the time data. So here, in order to do that, you have the option called add entry. So whenever you hover your mouse over the plus icon, you will see add entry option. Just click on add entry and you can manually put in the in time and the out time right here. If you want to enter any comments, you have the comments box right here. You can click on the comments box and enter whatever comments would you like to put in. You also have an option to add a break. So if your uh, administrator has configured the template to allow you to punch in or put in breaks on the timesheet, then you can put in the breaks up here as well. The bunches are differentiated. So if I just put in um, 5 a.m., I'm going to put 5 here. I can now either put 1 p.m. I can type in 1 and then the p.m. Or I can say 13, so it automatically converts it into 1 p.m. if it wants to. And if I put in add break, for example, I left it for break at 1.30 p.m. And I came back at uh, 2, so I can just put this thing here. Right, so breaks and punches are differentiated with this B icon that you see in this color coding, and that tells you that you were on break for that particular time period. At the bottom, you see a payroll summary, so that's again a widget that's been enabled on this particular timesheet, and there are different validations that you can have uh, on this particular timesheet. Validations like you have to have an in and out pair. If that doesn't exist, then you cannot submit your timesheet. Or if um, you just want to give a warning uh, for completing the in out pair, and you just don't want that to go away, so you can do that as well. All right. While the other things remain absolutely same, let's log in as user number three. So let's see how the next user uh, enters time. I'm going to log in as the third user here. Now the third user will use a punch in out timesheet. Now this is how the view would look like for people who are punching in and punching out. You have two tabs instead of one. Uh, there's one tab where you punch in and punch out, and the other tab shows you the complete timesheet where the punches will be transferred. You can decide if you want the punches to be edited by the user or not. That's an access that's been given while configuring the uh, user's punch policies. In order to punch in, you just have to go ahead and click on the clock in button, and it clocks you in at their respective time. The next is uh, whatever time you punch in, if you go over to the timesheet section, uh, you will be able to go ahead and see those punches transferred to the timesheet automatically for today. You can punch out or you can go ahead and punch into break if you would like to at any point of time. So that is how your punching and punch out work. Uh, if you want, you can allow the users to punch in and punch out from our cloud clock device, which is basically a iPad where you can install our cloud clock software and put it in front of your office where people can punch in or punch out using their QR cards that you issue to them or your employee IDs or you can use face recognition. And any of these three methods they can use and punch in and punch out of work at any point of time. Whatever punches are done, they will also be transferred automatically to the timesheet, and you will see all the punches on the timesheet already. You can also allow users to punch in and punch out from the mobile app, and in either of these methods, CloudLock and mobile app, you can allow users to capture their photographs, or you can allow users to capture the GPS location. If there are um, options for images, you will be seeing the images listed out here, so you will see all the images listed right here. Right. Let's log in as the next user in line. So I'm going to log in as user number four. 
The user is also going to be a punch user, so it's going to punch in and punch out, but uh, there is a slight difference while punching in and punching out. You will have the option to go ahead and punch in and punch out of projects, tasks, or activities. So in order to do that, you will have to just go ahead and click on the clock in button. You will get this option uh, additionally where you can choose the client, you can choose the project, and if there's a task existing, you can choose the task. And the moment you click on the Save button, this will be saved, and you will have your punch in done with regards to that time entry. Now, this is the same behavior that you will see on the mobile app and Cloud Clock as well. So on the Cloud Clock and mobile apps as well, you can just go ahead and punch in into projects, tasks, and clients at any point of time. Similar to what we saw earlier, all the punches will be transferred over to timesheet. So you will see the timesheet section here, and you will see all the punches transferred with regards to it directly. Now comes the time of using the overwrite method, which we omitted in the first section, which is called allocate timesheet hours. So whatever hours you've entered, the total hours that you've entered per day against the project task and client selection, that will be copied over to the time distribution table that you see at the bottom. So I'm going to click on allocate timesheet hours. I'm going to say overwrite time entries, and whatever entries that I have made, they will be overwritten at the time distribution table. And I will have the project task and client selections also done already. So this is how my entire table would now look like. I have made the punches against these projects, and these are the total number of hours that I actually put in in the punch form. Right. So let's log in now as the next user, which is user number five. And this user will be providing you the access to go ahead and put an in and out time with regards to a project, client, and task selection. So I'm logging in as the user number five. I'll see the timesheet, remember, that we saw in user number two. Uh, the only difference is that I'm just not going to be putting in time and out time, but I am also going to be putting in the project, client, and task selection. So all that I have to do is just click on work time. I'm going to put in uh, the time that I've worked against a particular selection. So I'm just going to make the selection right here. All right, so that's how you can use the in-out time uh, for time entry with regards to a project, client, or task, or activity that you have in the system. Well, this is how um, these are the different ways that you can capture time against. Uh, we are now open to questions. Remember that your lines are muted. You can message or chat us the, quest uh, the questions, and we'll be sure to answer them. our first question. Uh, the question says that uh, the punch in and punch outs, whether you have made it from the web, whether somebody has edited it, how would you know as an end user? Well, that's a very interesting question. Let me log in as one user who has uh, punch in outs. I'm going to log in as user number four, where I had punching with project task and client selections. And uh, whenever you punch in and punch out and move over to your timesheet, you will have a have a audit history icon right next to your punches. You can click on this audit history icon, and it will give you a complete detail of when did you do the punch, who did it, and from which device was the punch made. If it was manually added by somebody, it will show up to be something like this, that it was added at this point of time by the name of the person who did it. So that's how you can have a quick look at your punch. Um, Looking at uh, where you can get more information, you can go to our Replicon Help Center, which is replicon.com slash help. Or you can use our Replicon community, which is community.replicon.com. Or you can get in touch with our Replicon support team, and we will be glad to help you on that. With this, thank you for joining the webinar today. We will have webinar every week on different topics. You can go over to our uh, upcoming webinar page on our website and look for the next webinar that is coming up. And we hope to see you there soon. Thank you all for joining in. Have a pleasant day.